that cross at Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He paid your sin debt in full with his blood. The price that you can never pay on your own, Jesus paid it with his blood on the cross. Paying the sin debt that you can never pay on your own, so you can be reconciled back to him, so you can be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day, as it is written in the scripture. That's the gospel of your salvation. And if you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. We serve a holy, a just, and a perfect God. And our sin, it separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross of Calvary. Again, paying the sin debt that you could never pay on your own. He paid it with his blood. Again, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sin, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friend. That is love. But going back to Ephesians 1.13, once you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. Once you hear that and you believe it, you put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, believe it again, Jesus Christ paid your sin debt in full on the cross with his blood, and in his death, burial, and resurrection, look at what it says next in Ephesians 1.13. In whom, also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. So once you believe the gospel of your salvation, you put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, in his death, burial, and resurrection, you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. There is a spiritual baptism that occurs when you believe the gospel of your salvation. You're baptized into the body of Christ. And on the bottom of the screen in Ephesians 4.30, we read, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. But right here and right now, it's time to repent, to believe the gospel, and to be converted to new life in Jesus Christ today. To repent. That means meant to know it. It means to change your mind. What are you changing your mind about? You're changing your mind about who God is. You're going from unbelief, dead in your sins, to believe a new creature in Christ. And you're agreeing with God about your sin condition, that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, that you can't save yourself, that Jesus Christ did it all for you on the cross of Calvary by shedding his precious blood. And you're believing, and you're putting your faith and your trust again in the gospel of your salvation, which is Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. It's horrific. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. In John 14, 6, we read, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Acts 4.12, we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. In 1 Timothy 2.5, we read, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad is not going to save you. Dead saints are not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. Your own works, your own human efforts, you trying to earn your way there, that is not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven, and one name that's going to save you, and that is Jesus Christ and him alone. Get on the lifeboat right now, because yes, this ship is sinking, this world system. Just like the Titanic went down, this ship is sinking. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now, because your next second is not promised. Jesus loves you. In Romans 5 eight, we read, But God commended his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died 
for us. He loves you. But you have free will. I can't make the choice for you. You either accept or you reject. But you have a chance right now to accept. And I pray you do, because tomorrow is not promised. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he is coming quickly, one day very soon at the appointed time, sooner than most of us here even realize. Keep watching with me. God bless you all.